launched my meditation journey 20 22 years back take your attention to your right foot with your eyes closed with your palms facing upwards back gently erect not stretched shoulders not drooping just stay quiet and don't move through the next 10 minutes stay in a comfortable position so that you don't have to move take your attention to your right foot your toe your toe fingers the bottom of your foot your heel ankle move your attention from your ankle to your knee walk upwards through your calf muscles watch your calf muscles if they are tightened if they are stretched loosen them up watch the shape of your right knee the bend the back of the knee knee cap move upwards from the knee to the hip and move to your left foot take your attention to your left foot and once again watch your entire foot your toes your heel ankle and gently move up to your knee move up from your knee to your hip and watch your thigh muscles watch both your legs together and if there are any stretched muscles any muscles which are tightened loosen them up be vulnerable watch your hips watch your groin in a non judgmental way watch your genitals and move upwards to your abdomen when i ask you to move and take your attention to a certain part of the body with your eyes closed try and bring your awareness to that part preksha means watching just watch that part with your feelings with your intuition with your awareness take your awareness to your back watch your tailbone slowly move upwards up your spine your backbone to the middle portion of the back now come towards the front watch your navel watch your stomach and move upwards to the region where your rib cage splits and stop here for a minute for a few moments see if you can feel your heart beat if you cannot it's absolutely all right move upwards watch the left side of your chest and watch the right side of your chest your rib cage go to the sides of your chest and move backwards as the rib cage turns take your attention to the back and watch your entire back in one go find the center of your back which is your backbone your spine in one go watch your arms and watch your face and your head ask all parts of your body to relax ask all parts of your body all your muscles ask them to relax let them loose take a deep breath in and gently let go from your nose and bring your attention to your breath your nostrils a lot of you might notice your breathing has slowed down stay here for a few moments and see if you can relax your facial muscles muscles at the back of your head and bring a gentle smile on your face 
don't stretch your facial muscles just a very pleasant gentle smile with a little bit of gratitude for no reason a thankfulness for no reason and see if you can take this sense this feeling of thankfulness of gratitude to the rest of your body see if you can take it to your heart and by doing so see if you feel any sensations in your body in your palms if your mind drifts away just bring it back the mind's job is to drift away into thoughts past future worries anxieties your job is to bring the mind back during your practice of dhyana since we have only 10 minutes I'm going to ask you to prepare to come out take one big deep breath and gently let go from your nose and become aware of your body and all the sounds around you the fan in the room the ac people talking my voice birds any sounds from outside traffic anything everything become aware gently move your wrists move your ankles little bit motion to your shoulders to your neck keep your eyes closed rub your palms together and keep them on your face and cover your eyes nicely and with your eyes closed watch the darkness And gently as you feel like you move your palms and looking down open your eyes so that was a quick 10 minute introduction a taste of meditation which ties in very well to my presentation if all of you or any of you who ever liked the 10 minute session and this was your first time please do give me a little feedback with with a little check mark or a thumbs up or something so that i just know that if you enjoyed it i'm going to talk about like part said the journey of the drupal india association so how many of you recognize this picture okay do raise your hands or think you know just engage a little bit yeah to recognize this is angkor wat this is in cambodia it's a beautiful actually the world's largest hindu buddhist temple complex it's a complex of about 200 temples uh, if i'm not wrong 200 this is a recent excavation done by the archaeological survey of india um in in uh, vietnam in the mai son region in vietnam and they discovered a monolith this is just what 15 days back if i'm not wrong it's a 9th century monolith shivalinga and uh, this is still being unearthed it's 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 huge monolith means it's been carved out of one big rock okay so it's not different pieces of uh, stone joined together and of course we all know shivalinga belongs to the whole philosophy of shiva belongs here to india and so what is it doing in in vietnam you may might be wondering um so this brings me to the chola empire the tamil chola empire and a small empire in india by region but one of the oldest and the world's longest family empires in the world almost 15 to 1600 years unbroken and massive um ship maritime power right the entire what is known as singapore today was actually part of the sri vijaya empire which was a vassal of the cholas and the trade routes was all over singapore philippines right up to all up to china that was the trade route that the cholas influenced yeah the cholas were not the only seafaring uh, people actually the odias right above the cholas were even better seafarers the sri lankan population 
uh, a large part of the ethnicity of the Sri Lankan population today actually is Uriya. Um, and this is all on the right side of India, right? On this eastern coast. And that's not the only coast that we were trading. There was our, our uh, western coast. Indian ships in, uh, were actually traveling firstly to Saudi Arabia, to the Arab world, Gulf, Madagascar. There is an Uriya and a Gujarati uh, strain in, in people in Madagascar. We were trading with South Africa, okay? Cape of Good Hope is where there is a massive amount of trade. Very interestingly, when Vasco da Gama came looking for India, he left Europe and stuck along the African coastline and slowly made his way to Cape of Good Hope in the hope of traveling to India to find spices and the land of wealth and so on and so forth. And after two or three attempts, unsuccessful, he was sort of disappointed that he's not able to move forward. And then he sees ships 10 times larger than his ship which using the cover of which or traveling along with them is when he reached India. He reached Cochin, if I'm not wrong, right? Uh, uh, along with these ships. And they were all Indian ships, by the way. In his diaries, he himself writes that his ships, his ship was 10 times smaller than the Indian ships, which were named Begini, uh, Dharini, Gamini, and so on and so forth. India has been a very powerful maritime um, country for millennia. We are not right now uh, to that same level of glory, but that's where we come from. Now, trying, you must be wondering what the hell am I doing talking about Indian maritime history in the Drupal journey of uh, Drupal, right? So I'll, I'll tie that piece together. Let me take you to how all this started. It was actually Shamla 2018 when she was on the uh, director at large uh, at the Drupal Association. She wrote in an email saying that it'd be great for us at India, being one of the largest users of Drupal, to be the first ones to set up a formal association, part of the Drupal Association's outreach to build more regional presence. And I, you know, we want to do this together and let's reach out to everybody to make this happen. And so Shamla and I got to work, um, started roping in others, Piyush, Ratchet slowly building that, you know, momentum for it. Uh, and by June 2019, we actually announced at Shamla announcing at the Drupal Camp Delhi, the formation of the Drupal India Association. That's Piyush and I standing in the background. By September 2019, we had our first official board meeting at the Drupal Camp Pune, largely all led by Deepen, Praful, uh, and, and the others uh, in the Pune community. And at the Pune community, at the Pune event, we decided that we are going to, what are the objectives we are going to go for? And we said that uh, we're going to basically grow opportunities for Drupal in India, both for businesses as well as, uh, you know, developers, right? So grow the development community in India, the developer community. And we also said that Drupal contributions coming from India must grow up must grow a lot. So we were already very large in numbers, always actually for multiple years, we've been just behind uh, US in terms of contributions in numbers. And Deepen rightly pointed out and corrected our, uh, you know, this massive machoism that we were sort of on trip that we were on, oh, we are the second largest contributors to Drupal and so on and so forth. And he put our feet on the ground and said, look, that the quality of our contributions is still very, very poor. So let's fix that. So we put that out and saying that, yes, we'll work on the quality as well, not only the quantity. And we said that we'll evangelize Drupal in India. Of course, we'll evangelize. And then we also agreed uh, with, you know, that we'll actually not only evangelize Drupal in India, but also in the Indian Ocean Rim. And that is the connect that I wanted to do with uh, the earlier story that I made. We've always influenced the Indian Ocean Rim. And it's time we do a little bit of that, of that back with uh, Drupal as well. Okay. So those were objectives and a little bit of visioning or goals and all of that, that we sort of set out to do. So by the time, uh, you know, every three months or so we were having camps and we had sort of built a calendar 
no, we built a calendar actually of the year's events when we met for a first meeting in Chennai. On day two, we actually had the Chennai camp and we all met, uh, you know, had a board meeting. And this time, Shamla invited right there in the middle, um, this man in the blue shirt, Ram Raj. He's actually one of the early, he's Sifi, and if, uh, you know, most of you here would be very young to know um, Sifi, but, you know, had it not been for people like, or let me put it the other way, it is actually people like Rajaram who were the founders of what the Indian IT, ITS industry now is, right? We're, a, if I'm not wrong, a $250 billion export industry. And all of that is based on the foundations of uh, people like him, right? And so Shamla uh, invited him for the board meeting, helped do some visioning and so on and so forth. And all of us were coming up with some ideas of doing some uh, uh, business events and you know things like that. And he kept on saying that, guys, you need to think big. You know, you're forming an association. So what is going to hold you together? What is that will bind you towards a much bigger, towards st sticking together and going after some big goals? And we had some, uh, at least one big goal, um, you know, in the mix of build, doing something like replicating the OSGOV model that Australian uh, government has done and built OSGOV, built a Drupal distribution for adoption for all citizen uh, government portals, platforms. And we thought, let's do something like an in India Gov and work with NIC and contribute and so on and so forth. So that, that was a big idea. And yet at the same time, we were looking for, you know, we were going around brainstorming. And then an idea occurred that why don't we, you see, Drupal 9 was going to be released. And, you know, we were putting ourselves a, a target of saying that we want to be a large contributor, not only quantity, but quality and so on and so forth. And it didn't take us long to say, okay, guys, why don't we all go after being the largest contributor of Drupal 9 by June 2020 when it releases? And to be honest, you know, we said it, but then all of us had scared shit looks on our faces. Okay. We were really scared. What are we trying to do here? And, you know, is it really possible, feasible, all that confusion? And here was Ra Ram Raj who got the, you know, the weight of it. And he said, that sounds like a good plan. And so, you know, we said, okay, then if you're committing to it, let's go for it. Now there is no looking back. And so, you know, we also started in the meantime, started pooling funds. So all these companies came forward and all of us put three lakhs each to create a pool of 21 lakhs for building the Drupal India Association. I don't remember the sequence of events, you know, very accurately. So I think this happened a little bit earlier, uh, but you know, that so, and also I've put this in reverse uh, alphabetical order every time all the A's come up. So I thought this time, let me put the U's up uh, first. And so the idea was to invest in social media, sponsorship of Pan India events, and many other things, sponsorship of local uh, events. Then um, the Drupal Camp Kolkata in March was planned. And for the first time, sponsorships were collected under DIA, right? Which was a really big deal for all of us. And, you know, when I was getting messages on my phone also of some money coming in, I thought money was getting deposited by some illegal methods to my account and I was freaking out what the hell is happening till I realized my finance tell me that oh I talked to Shamla and this is the money for the uh, Drupal camp Kolkata coming in and so uh, you know then of course the next board meeting was thought we had an agenda and tickets booked and then China busted our plans and then anyways we continued Drupal Camp Kolkata was cancelled. Unfortunately, I think we've returned all the money. And then, but you know, the, the commitment, uh, and to be honest, I really want to call out uh, uh, Shamla here. You know, had she not been on top of us putting this recurring 30 minute, 1 p.m. catch up on Fridays uh, every fortnight, right? Just that discipline and continuing to show up, it, it, was, it was just terrific, right? And without that, I think you need, you know, one or two leaders like that who have to constantly show up and allow the others who are sort of sometimes busy or whatever else. I mean, I'm not trying to say Shambla is not busy, but it takes extraordinary effort to do that, right? To constantly show up for what is also priority. And I mean, I'm also, right, all of us are committed because it was already calendared, but I'm just calling out a specific name to, 
you know, make it a little special. I think there was a special effort over there. So with all of this, I think we, we kept making some small progress. So then the Drupal 9 porting weekend happened and we did some really good stuff, right? Got about 45 Drupalers from various cities, 10 mentors from all our Indian respective companies. I think also some mentors internationally joined us. And then we had contributed to around 165 uh, Drupal modules. And it was a really, really nice uh, show of collective effort across companies who are supposed to be seen as competitors. Really, really nice, right? And then we participated in the Drupal Cares campaign. Yeah? So I'm just calling out a few tweets here. Um, somebody internationally re reaching out, thanking us, our community, Piyush, and Accelerant for inspiring him to become a member. And then Heather um, acknowledging us, you know, for our contribution. I really believe that we wanted to do a lot, lot more. Uh, I mean, I think we felt we were wanting on how much, how many more members we should have got, but, you know, um, we're never too late for that. And I think there's an opportunity for all of us here to sign up for uh, membership, paid memberships of the, uh, of the Drupal Association. We participated in the Drupal 9 release and did all of these pictures. Uh, Sharmila and Surbhi led this whole thing of, you know, asking us, chasing us down to be a little creative. And look at that 9 there, right? Guys, notice that most creative 9 I made. I asked my son to do that for me. I didn't do a jot. And then we went for the Drupal. This conclave is a result and of the continuous steps that have been taken. And to be honest, right here, I think a special calling out goes to Deepen for envisioning this and really for Surbi and Sharmila and a host of others to really put this all together. So, but what about a BHAG of becoming uh, the largest contributor of D9 group globally? Well, we didn't make that happen, but as of 17th June, we, were, we had total 671 credits and we're in the first page, number six on the global position, global ranking with core contributions, 101 core contributions. And why, how this is happening is basically that all the companies, all of us agreed that whatever contributions we make, we will ask, we will make, uh, so the developers are the contributors, the companies that the developers work for, are the sort of sponsors or the companies that they work with, but we made DIA the client and right. So that's how from zero to number six globally, DIA is, has risen, right? Within a matter of months, I think just basically four or five months uh, here, here. And so, you know, I posted this uh, uh, yesterday on my LinkedIn and my coach Ram Gopalan, he actually came and wrote this, when the tide rises, all boats rise. So when, you know, Drupal rises, all Drupal companies rise. When DIA rises, all Drupal companies and all of us as developers, as part of the community rise, right? It was, I thought, a very, very apt thing to say and remind us here. So thank you for listening. But before I end my presentation, I would encourage all the participants here to become paying members of the Drupal Association. Uh, start contributing to Drupal.org. You can help port modules to D9. If you're not developers, you can organize local events in your cities, do documentation, participate in QA, and of course, also do translations. So, you know, as the famous adage goes, come for the software, stay for the community. I'd like to welcome you and invite you to participate in, in Drupal. Thank you.